Good morning. How are you? I hope you have your coffee. I hope you have a thinking caps on. I'm back. We're almost done. We're this close. Um, but really, in, in reality, are we really done? We've got so much more to do. We can't rest on our laurels. So, let's get right into this. We were uh, yesterday talking about uh, airplanes, right? And rooms and, and, and all those things. And we, we touched on it. And, and this book does. It, it brushes on it. It doesn't go, that, it doesn't go in depth. And that's uh, intentionally there so that you can explore and, and, and implement the tool in your practice. Just, just like any tool, you're going to get the basic instructions on how to use it. Then you're going to have to apply it. You're going to have to apply it in practice. And again, I have. And I'm going to continue to do so because the persistence of tools is what is tantamount. Now, creating schedules and ledgers. And this is important because of the fact that it could save you so much time on the back end if you invest the time in the front end. I've been trying to drill this home to you. And um, again, I, I just, uh, I'm not seeing it um, as much as I should. And, and that's okay because uh, this is a competitive market. Now, creating schedules and legends. So this is a certification objective. This is a certification objective. Let me just get my bearings here. WT, ZA. Schedules are lists of elements and element properties within the model. They itemize building object, objects such as walls, doors, and windows, as well as calculate quantities, areas, and volumes. They can uh, list document elements such as sheets, keynotes, and views, and many, many other things. Every device, sprinkler heads, pumps, makeup air units, lighting fixtures, um, lighting uh, electrical devices, air handler units, variable air volume controls, linear diffusers, registers, burn, uh, boilers, furnaces, automatic transfer switches, transformers, panels, switch gear. Anything you can imagine that you can create can be scheduled if the parameters are correct, right? So, let's not deviate from the center. It's not just that. It's, there, it's much, much more. They can also list documents such as sheets, keynotes, and views. Schedules are yet another live way to view a Revit model. Once created, they are constantly kept up to date with any changes that occur in the model itself. And with AutoCAD, even in uh, the MEP world, you'll see when um, you put in your uh, electrical devices, sure, you can update your schedules to reflect the changes in your circuits, but you're going to have to regenerate them. There's going to be a disconnect every single time from the schedule drawing to the drawing that is being um, information is extracted from. And you'll get that hash mark, that slash mark in the middle of your schedule that you have to update. And there is the disconnect. There lies the disconnect in the software. And, and believe it or not, it's a killer, man. It's a killer. That, that, that right there alone. It doesn't constantly update like this software platform. And I'll say the word again, bi-directional associativity. Bi-directional associativity. Now, legends are views in which you can display it's like handshaking. Legends are views in which you can display building components or annotations used in your model without affecting quantity schedules of the actual project model. Legends can be created for displaying information such as door types, wall types, key plans, or general notes. Legends and schedules are unique in their behavior as a view because they are the only views that can be placed on multiple sheets. Creating schedules. In a project workflow, Creating schedules of objects, areas, or quantities is usually one of the most laborious tasks for architects. When this process is performed manually, it can take a very long time and typically results in errors that require validation of the design data. In Revit, all building elements have information about their properties defined within the model. You also have the option to include additional information with any element. For example, Doors have properties such as size, material, fire, rate, fire rating, cost, and so on. All of this information can be scheduled and quantified because the schedule is a live tabular view of the element within the model. Modifying values in the schedule changes the element in the model and vice versa. There are several types of schedules, all of which you can access from the Create panel of the View tab. You can also create schedules by right-clicking the Schedules Quantities node in the Project Browser.
you can create six primary types of schedules. So from right now, mouse clicking it, new schedule quantities, new graphical column schedule, new material takeoff, new sheet list, new note block, new view list. And we can talk about browser organization during the customization phase of this, but you could also go up to the architectural tab and you can go up to, uh, blah, 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 where is it? Schedules, schedules. Um, used to be here. But well, I, I remember it was over there. Let's see here. Schedules. Cre uh, the create tab. Oh, is that what it says? Hold on a second. You can also create, uh, there are several types of schedules, all of which you can access from the create panel of the view tab. My bad. From the view tab, right over here. So we can uh, look back. Let me just check this message really quick because I'm a busy man. I've got somewhere to be. Uh, okay. Um, yep. Hello. That's, that's from uh, Governor Cuomo. He can wait. <laughs> all right. Andrew can wait. We'll see what happens in November. Hopefully. He won't have to wait too long. All right. So. Now, you can create six primary types of schedules. Let's take a look here. Uh, schedule quantities creates a key schedule or a schedule of building components. A key schedule lets you define keys to automatically fill in some information for the schedule. Graphical column schedule creates a graphical column schedule for the project. With graphical common column schedules, you can include off-grid columns, filter specific columns to view, group similar column locations, and apply the schedules to a sheet. Material takeoff creates a list of the subcomponents or materials in any Revit family category. Material takeoff schedules have all the functionality and characteristics of other schedule views, but allow you to get material quantities that make up a component assembly. Sheet list creates the lists creates a schedule that lists the drawings in the project. Um, you can use a sheet list as a table of contents for construction documents that you've seen them on the uh, G100 cover sheet, right? Usually, maybe the second page, third page, and each division will have a schedule, right? If you've ever seen a construction document set, uh, each division will have a schedule. Note block creates a schedule of annotations added using the symbol tool. Use note blocks to list text descriptions of symbols that are applied to elements in the project. Right, well, if you think about it, um, when you um, add symbols, create your own symbols, you're gonna have to explain what those symbols are. And listen, I've been on a block, especially in the mechanical end where there are so many acronyms, so many acronyms, and they vary a little bit from project to project. Uh, WSHP, right? What is that, you say? Water source heat pump. But on another set, it could mean something else. So it's really a good idea to stick with the AIA and uh, the BOMA standards on a lot of this because you'll get the, your, your, uh, your contractors and your engineers uh, confused. So try to, try to be consistent, right? As consistent as you can with, uh, within a group or an organization of groups or a group of organizations, right? And uh, more and more, I, I see it uh, being consistent. And I've seen a lot of drawings. I've got a lot of drawings, man. I, I, I've got a lot of drawings on my drives. Um, in any event, um, that, uh, that note block is important. View list creates a schedule of the views in the project. In a view list, you can sort and group views by type, level, sheet, or other parameters. If desired, you can include view lists on sheets. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, that's the six primary types of schedules. Uh, schedule quantities as the most commonly used schedule type. And this is just a reiteration of this. As the most commonly used schedule type, this schedule allows you to list and quantify all element category types. You would use this type to create tabular views of doors, walls, windows, areas, rooms, and so on. Graphical column schedule. This type of schedule can graphically show the structural columns in the project and their attributes. Material takeoff. This type of schedule can calculate the area or volume of materials across any family category. For example, you may want to know the volume of concrete within the model. Regardless of whether the concrete is in a wall, floor, or column, you can configure the schedule to report the total amount of the material in the project. Sheet list. This schedule allows you to create a list of all the sheets in the project. In addition to the number and name of the sheet, you can include the current revision number, date, and revision description. Note block. This type of schedule lists the parameters of generic annotation families that are used in your project.
These are different from element tags because the values reported in the note block schedule come from the annotation families, not the model objects. You can also use a note block to list the annotation symbols, center lines, north arrows, used in a project. And think about the electrical uh, uh, note blocks. Every bell and whistle, you have a quadruplex, a duplex, a, 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 a light switch, a three-way switch, a pilot light switch, a, a gravity switch, uh, and all the lighting uh, control control symbols. Um, There's a lot of symbols, and, and you're going to have to uh, explain what those symbols mean. Now, and, and they are different in different geographic areas of the world as well, right? All over the world. Now, I'm going to get to foreign language version of this class soon enough. Let's stick with the English version for now, but again, we're going to have to go metric eventually, and we're going to start having to convey this in a multiple languages, because the software is written in many, many languages. But physics is physics, and numbers don't lie. That's the beauty of it, right? That's the beauty of it. We're going to speak the same language, whether they like it or not. They're taking our jobs! <laughs> All right, view list. This schedule generates a list of all the views in the project browser and their properties. A view list is useful for managing your project because the schedule is a bi-directional view, which allows you to edit many view properties such as name, scale, and phase. Each of these schedule types gives you the, abil the ability to select related element properties that you can mix and match to track elements within the model. When you create a new schedule, you, you must first select a category of objects to itemize. You can also filter the schedule based on the various disciplines by selecting the filter list drop-down menu at the upper left. Now it does show creating a new schedule. Um, so I'm just going to show the dialog box real quick. If I, yeah, that's it. That's uh, basically the dialog box. I don't, I don't want to jump ahead, but that's uh, pretty much uh, it for filter. You can filter it by your discipline, right? Notice you don't see civil. Dirt. How much is dirt? Well, you can still get the earth. You can still quantify the amount of earth. You can, right? From a topographic, you can. You can quantify how much fill and, and how much uh, uh, earth is going to be removed. Any, uh, any uh, element in here. And earth just so happens to be one. It's a material. Gravel, aggregate, all that stuff. So all that can be scheduled. I, I tend to say you can't do it in a civil aspect, in a civil aspect but yeah, you can quantify that as well. This is a quantification tool. So as you can see, there is a substantial amount of elements. A substantial amount of elements. That's just architecture. Right? If we were to turn on each of these individually, we could take a look slowly but surely, right? Slowly but surely. Right? Let's expand this a little bit for you. You'll get a better idea of what's going on. Structural stiffener. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Talk about nick of time. I needed this R&R &R more than anything. Thank God I'm on furlough. Whew, man, I didn't think that I would have to wait this long to get my first furlough. Wow. Anyway, mechanical. 2001, right? I haven't, actually, no. I haven't been on furlough since 1996. 1996. That's how long it's been since I was able to go on furlough. In any event, thanks, Dad. Assholes. Yeah, terminals, analytical spaces, duct systems, ducts, mass, mechanical equipment, P fabrication, duct work, hangers. Hmm. Huh? Hangers. Now, hangers are very tricky in this in this program. I've seen um, there's some limitations to what they can do, and I assume it's going to get better in later versions. But the fabrication aspect of this is very important. It's very important. Um, you can, you can expedite so much for these contractors, for them. You can help them so much. The general foreman is going to love you. Not look at you like you're a ridiculous fool sent from the Ivy League that doesn't understand. They're going to love you. They're going to love to see you. They, they like to see their layouts um, precisely uh, drawn the way they want them in the shop drawing aspect of it. They like that. You'll be their right-hand man. Um, they 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 don't want to they they they'll want you on the job. You'll be their right hand man or woman. You'll be their right hand man, and if you get in with a good crew like I happen to have, uh, once and once or twice, you'll get in with a good crew. I'll tell you, in, in construction in New York City, it's all going to be dependent. If you're going to go the shop drawing route, it's all going to be dependent on the team that you 
I was deployed with, if you get in with a good crew of, of guys and gals, you're going to see that you can do so much together. And uh, I'm not going to mention the crews that I've worked with in the past that I have, uh, I have admired and I, uh, I miss, I actually miss some of the crews. And of course now we only exist within the virtual world, hopefully some of them are still online. Um, but again, anyone, any of them that knows me, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I don't like to look back too much because uh, I'll shed a tear, but I, I have been able to meet some folks in the industry that I miss wholeheartedly because they were instrumental in my development. Oh, I almost shed a tear. I'm not going to name names. <laughs> because, you know, the minute I start shedding a tear, I'll start to think about how angry I am at all the motherfuckers that weren't part of the team. All they wanted to do was break down the cohesiveness of it. Remember, there's only really three of us, right? There's only three. Stay well within your faculties, young man, young lady. Although the most common schedules are based on a single object category, you can also create schedules that span categories. The first option in the dialog box in the figure on the screen is the multi-category schedule. You might want to schedule all the casework, furniture, and furniture systems in a project simultaneously, or all the windows and doors if they are being ordered from the same manufacturer. Although this type of schedule allows you to span multiple categories, many specific parameters cannot be included. First, it is difficult to isolate just two categories, such as windows and doors, in a multi-category schedule. Second, you cannot include critical parameters in the schedule, such as length, width, and height. Another limit of this schedule type is that you cannot schedule host elements, walls, floors, ceilings, and so on, only their materials and family components in a, a multi-category schedule, right? But before we jump ahead, I want you to go to electrical for a second. <laughs> Take a look at this, huh? In the electrical world. Right? Isn't that just the... That's just beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Right? And you can create categories, right? There's nothing saying you can't create categories. You'll need this. Right? You're going to need it. If, uh, if you want to take that next step. If you want to put down the tools, too. Maybe you want, your intent is to put the tools down. Maybe you're tired of working with the tools. Maybe you're tired of it. Maybe not. Maybe you miss working with the tools. In any event, this is a tool. And I, I, I tell you, man, this is, this is geared towards a, a specific audience. I want you to see the power of this. this. This is something that is designed for you. You folks, not, not necessarily me in this respect, but all you folks that have been working with the tools, that have been laying this out, spray painting it on the floor, this is where this goes, this is where this goes, this is where this goes. And having all your crews coming in and following your designs, uh, you're designing them too. You're doing them in the field with highlighters from the contract drawings. But now, see, think about it. You can take this to the next level. Maybe you may think this may not benefit you, but think about this. You don't necessarily have to retire, right? That means you don't have to retire. You can go and sit down. And then you can continue. You may not even have to walk the job anymore. Now, think about it. You gravitate from general foreman to another role. Now, you're dictating policy to the general foreman. Think about that. Not me. God forbid, I, I'm not going to be dictating policy to any general foreman in the field. I already know that. That's not my forte. I'm something else. But this is for the general foreman as well you'll be able to dictate policy to the general foreman. That disconnect is going to be gone, right? The office would love that. Wouldn't the office like to keep you on in this capacity, right? In, in, in this capacity. And then bridge the gap between project management, engineering, estimating, and installation, and fabrication. This is where you come in. This is for you, folks, for you general foreman out there, you sub foreman. This is right up your alley. I've been trying to tell you this. In any event, listen, I've seen the foreman that can't make it in the field that they throw back in the office, the ones that can't manage men. I've seen what they do to them and how they send them back because they know that men will fucking throw them off the fucking building <laughs> with the attitudes that they have. 
some of the, a lot of, I've seen all the weaker foremans, the uh, driftwood, drift my way, and try to pull that shit with me on this end. Uh, not the uh, not the good ones, not the the best in the industry, not the the pros. Those don't come back, you know. But I, I wish they would, because those are the ones we need. Not the driftwood that they send in from the field that won't be, won't, can't cut it in the field. I can name names. A lot of those foremen they don't work with the tools anymore. They're in the office trying to figure this shit out. I'm not going to teach it to them. They can go fuck themselves, because most of those motherfuckers got a chip on their shoulder, too. I can name names. A lot of psychiatry in this. There's a lot of psychiatry in this fucking software. Again, I can't go off on a tangent. I promised myself today I'd be Mr. Professional Mike, not Left Right Mike. Now, okay. Now, like I said, first of all, it gets a little difficult to isolate certain things with this, so you're going to have to practice it, and um, you know, you'll know uh, you get a better idea of uh, how this multiple category uh, works multi-category schedule. And if you notice, depending on the discipline, you'll see that there are certain things you can and cannot do. Right? So this is something you have to practice to get to the schedule to re report what you what you want. Excuse me. Um, but let's think about this in the context of a project. Um, this may not be the estimator's tool, because Navisource Manage also has a quantification aspect of it. It also has a timeliner. So there are also software programs at Autodesk that works with this software. This model can go right into Navisworks Manage, and Navisworks Manage can then take this software, quantify the quantities, right, and then uh, go into a timeliner, which is a Gantt chart, a, a video Gantt chart, okay, and I've demonstrated this in the class, a video Gantt chart, a timeliner sequencing of, uh, of the construction sequence from start to finish, and, and that's going to be something that's important, right? Uh, for example, when do you get a permit for the police to come and, and sit in their car while you put some cones out for your flagman to flag the concrete trucks in? All that's going to play into this. Urban planning plays into this. Uh, the permit process plays into this. You'll be able to know when to schedule permits, right? You'll be, you'll be able to know when to schedule inspections. But again, the general contractor uh, has a big role in this. The GC is going to be the, the, the go-between between the design team and the construction team and the management team that's existing within those three areas. And there's, there's more areas, I understand that. Um, but again, um, I, I, I must throw in a uh, plug for me. Listen, I, I've seen the process from the inside, and I've watched how all of these cohesive pieces or uncohesive pieces fit together. So my opinions have uh, hold, water, hold water, and they're going to hold water more and more because I'm only 50, right? And I've still got the, the youthful zeal and vigor and ambition to continue to do this. So um, I said to myself earlier, there's a lot I don't know. And there's a lot I wish I knew then that I knew now, that I know now. And I say to myself, well, Mike, there's going to become more apparent to you the older you get, right? It's going to become more and more apparent to you, the better and better you get. So um, sure, my, my confidence took a hit all along the way multiple times. I had to pick it up and dust it off, but it's getting back, you know, and that's the thing, you know. And this is going to change the individual of the organization more than anything. Inclusive of, the, inclusive of you. If you're sitting home and you're a stay-at-home mom and, and, and you like decorating, this is something for you. If you got the luxury of sitting home, maybe you can learn this and teach it to your kids in a homeschool environment. If you're a stay-at-home mom, a stay-at-home dad, you're retired, you got nothing better to do, you miss the industry. This is right up your alley. Could you imagine still dictating policy from the comfort of your own home office, getting back in the industry that you love? All of you retired tradesmen, artisans, it's right up your alley. You real estate agents, you, uh, you, you doctors, you lawyers. Picture a doctor you know, sitting here creating a laboratory or a pharmaceutical company or, 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 or a healthcare facility, right? Rehabilitation facility. All of these things, so much infrastructure, and wait till you see, there are built-in um, um, building, um, what's the word I'm looking for, uniform building code 
There are just built-in uniform building code parameters in here that are right out of the box, ready to go. It'll tell you how big the square footage of a room is supposed to be by code. Now, we'll get there. Again, I'm deviating from center. This is for schedules, but it's so important that you understand the power of this platform. It's not just geek speak. It's designed. It's designed to design. All right, schedule keys. This is a, um, when we get into this, um, let me just reiterate this paragraph because I went off on a tangent. And I got to remember, you know, I'm, I'm, I apologize, but again, 3D, 4D, and 5D. 3D, 4D, and 5D. You know, the pressure is mounting. Here they come, man. You know, I'm starting to see the site plan come to fruition. Look, you know, they're already doing it. I told you, this class is for three-year-olds. We don't have much time. Look, they're already getting the gear ready. We're in deep shit. If we don't hurry up, look, they, they've got it already. You know, the, the, the staff's already preparing for, for, the, for, the, for the project. And, and if we don't hurry up, they're, they're, they're going to be right up our ass. So we have to do what Clint East would say. We're going to give them a Missouri boat ride. We need to put some distance between ourselves and, and these professionals. Look, they're right up our ass. We've got to do, remain too diligent in this endeavor. We're in trouble. Hurry up, man. We don't have much time. Get right up our butt, these millennials. In any event, uh, again, this class is for three-year-olds. Although the most common schedules are based on a single object category, you can also create schedules that span categories. The first option in the dialog box is the multi-category schedule. You may want you might want to schedule all the casework, furniture, and furniture systems and projects simultaneously, or all the windows and doors if they are being ordered from the same manufacturer. Although the type of schedule allows you to span multiple categories, many specific parameters cannot be included. First, it is difficult to isolate just two categories, such as windows and doors, in a multi-category schedule. Second, you cannot include critical parameters in the schedule, such as length, width, and height. Another one of this schedule type is that you cannot schedule host elements, walls, floors, ceilings, and so on. Only the mater their materials and family components. So um, bookmark that. Bookmark a lot of this. Keep the book. Keep the book for reference. Engineering desk references. Lots of people keep lots of manuals. There is a tip. Uh, this is a, a real world scenario. BIM manager note. Real world scenario. Schedule keys. There is a special kind of schedule that gives you the ability to populate a list of values before placing any actual objects in your model as well as manage these values from one location. Known as a schedule key, it can be selected when you first create a schedule. A common example of the use of a schedule key is to manage room finishes. In this use case, you create a schedule key named room finish type. You add the parameters floor finish, base finish, wall finish, and ceiling finish to the schedule. In the schedule, Use the new row button to create room finish types. For example, you could create types for executive office, standard office, service corridor, and restroom. The parameter room finish type will then appear in the element properties of every room object. The parameters that are assigned to a schedule key can be edited only in the key schedule, not in the room properties. This might seem inconvenient, however, you can manage large numbers of objects with common parameters. For example, if the floor finish for all the rooms in your project that were assigned an executive office type needs to change from carpet to ceramic tile, you would simply change the schedule key and all instances of that room type would update. Now, that is something that it doesn't really go into right this second, but if you want, just Google it and you'll find somebody. That's the beautiful thing about building information modeling. Um, we are eager to share uh, what we've learned. And I've learned so much just from structuring my query to find an instructional series based on that passage alone. So if somebody in the office comes up to you and says, I need you to create a schedule key of all of that, and you only have a brief overview of it, within a half hour, maybe even an hour at most, you can find exactly how to do it step by step, and you will provide the information. Because this is a compliance. You have to, you have to. this is a legislative compliant industry foundation class model. This is required that you do it this way, mandated by the law. The United States and other countries have adopted it. So, you, so folks have had to find ways to comply and conform. So when they did, well, the, their, their next logical step was to share it because they knew 
probably, as I did, how hard it was to do it. So let's try to collaborate like a civilized society, all right? Because uh, you scratch my back and I'll scratch yours. Now, this is a certification objective. And I have to add this. When I was in college, I uh, had the, 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 uh, the opportunity to attend the United Nations Model Assembly uh, at the uh, Grand Hyatt Hotel. Now, I've worked with a lot of folks and I've paid attention and this is a cumulative uh, rewind of my life's work to a certain extent. And I'm going to document it and I'm going to enforce it now on the back end as you receive all the education. At some point you're going to be able to let it go right back. Right? You just accept it, take it, take it, take it, absorb it, absorb it, absorb it, sponge it up, sponge it up, and then you mop the floor with it. Isn't that how sponges work? And then you're them out. All right, now, uh, creating a room schedule. This is a certification objective. You can cancel out here. To become familiar with the general functionality of creating a schedule, you will create a room schedule. You're going to continue working in the model, which is the sample building C18 Revit file or its metric equivalent you opened um, early in the chapter. Later in this chapter, you will apply your skills to create an area schedule based on the previous exercises. And as a side note, when I get excited about this type of stuff, and I, uh, I, I really enjoy conveying it, I, I tend not to want a cigarette as much. I don't know if you notice that. If anyone's monitoring my nicotine addiction. You'll notice that as I get more and more uh, excited about my passions, I tend not to hit the cancer stick as much. Those are uh, they're drugs. Nicotine is a drug. There's a reason why I smoke. There's a reason why I smoke. I know what. I know why. I know why I smoke. Pretty good for the economy. <clears throat> it's pretty good for the economy. Taxpayers' dollars, right? I'm giving back. I'm such a philanthropist. In any event, yeah. So let's get this open. If you haven't already, get it from the uh, Books Companion website. If you're just joining us now, um, you've got a lot to, to go. But just uh, know that this instructional series text um, that I was fortunate enough to uh, gather from my colleagues in the Stevens Institute of Technology in Hoboken. Um, has a books companion website to assist you with exercises that you can utilize as templates and augment to fit your company's uh, workflow. Now, from the view tab in the ribbon, click schedules. Schedule quantities. In the new schedule dialog box, select rooms. from the list of categories and click OK, OK to continue. And there's scheduled keys right under it. That bin manager note. Ah, look at all those fields. Any Microsoft Access or Excel folk, uh, Microsoft Access gurus would have a field day with this, right? Any Microsoft Access gurus would definitely have, a, would definitely resonate with this. Uh, select rooms from list of categories and click OK to continue. You are then presented with the Schedule Properties dialog box. This is the main interface by which you set and later modify any of the organizational or appearance characteristics of your schedules. The dialog box consists of six tabs, Fields, Filter, Sorting, Grouping, Formatting, Appearance, and Embedded Schedule. Note that the Embedded Schedule tab is available only if you select either a room or space schedule. Let's just reiterate that real quick. Note, uh, note that the embedded schedule tab, embedded schedule tab, embedded schedule, is only available if you select either a room or space schedule. And we did, so it's available to us. Now, that's important. Within the room schedule, 
their devices. Now, this is huge for fire alarms and security systems. This is huge. This is where you'll be able to assign address, IP address parameters, right? You'll be able to assign IP address parameters to your fire alarm devices, your photoelectric smoke detectors, your, uh, your ionization smoke detectors, your, uh, your, uh, your routers, your routers, your uh, wireless routers, your hubs, all of that. You'll be able to, to, to monitor. You'll be able to turn this thing into a, a monitoring device and link it into a system that can monitor this uh, traffic. It it's, it's doesn't, doesn't stop here. Again, that's where IBM and Maximo come in. We can talk about that later. Well, if you can give Microdesk a call, they'll be happy to help you with that endeavor if it's your intent to monitor some traffic within your organization. And again, you go ask the fire department or the police department how this works. They'll tell you the same thing. They may, uh, may not want you to know, but, you know, again, yeah. magnetic fields are magnetic fields. All right, so I'm not going to get off on that. Um, so from the blah, 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 blah. Now, yeah, um, note the embedded schedule is available only if you select either room or space schedule. Let's step through each of these tabs and examine how they affect the form and function of the schedule. Fields. The fields tab lets you select the data that will appear in your schedule. The list of available fields on the left will vary based on the category you choose to schedule. If you've assigned any custom parameters to those categories, they will be available here, right? Any parameter. They will be available here. And you can write a formula to be a parameter. There's no reason why you can't. Um, all of you physics majors and you mathematical geniuses out there, you know damn well that you can write a formula in uh, Dynamo, right? And bring it in. Now it's a parameter that uh, has mathematical uh, Origins. All right, now, if you've assigned any custom parameters to those categories, they will be available here as well. Also notice the option include, uh, the option include element in, elements in links at the lower left corner, um, at the lower left corner, um, dot, um, in links, include elements in links. Important, right? Linked models. Now, here is something that you may not have thought of. You're an MEP firm, and you're ready to collaborate. And you're doing your shop drawings, and you get the architectural model. You can quantify it this way from the linked model. Okay, oh, what are they giving us? What's, what do they got installed? It's almost like a real-life scenario. You can, uh, you can see a list of what their latest model has. You can quantify it when you get it in. Include those uh, elements. Uh, yeah, at the lower left corner. Enabling this option will allow you to schedule across multiple files, and it can be a great tool for larger projects. The order of the fields you add to the schedule fields list at the right side, top to bottom, determines the order of columns in your schedule from right to right, from right, to right, from, uh, left to right. So if you put an area left, and then this is cell A1 in Excel, cell B1, C1, D1, E1, F1, F14 Tomcat. Anyway, we can talk about the history of AutoCAD and some other time. If you're in the Air Force, you'd love this software. In any event, <laughs> not going to be started. I was just thinking of the Tigris, Euphrates, River Valley, and all the mathematical geniuses that have come up through uh, the, the ages like Pythagorean and uh, Euclid and all those folks. Every time I think about that, you know me, I go off on a tangent because there's so much history in it too. How we got this far by studying these folks. In any event, but they write those people off. They, they write us off like we're geeks. Anyway, yeah, from uh, left to right. From the list of available fields on the left, Add level, number, name, and area to the list of scheduled fields on the right. So let me get rid of the ones I did. They have a specific instructional series here. Uh, level, number, name, and area. Level, number, name, and area. Let's just look. You can get rid of them this way. Remove a parameter, right? Do it that way. And then there's new parameter, which brings up the new parameter dialog box, right? If you wanted to 
put in a new parameter. As you can see, area flow divided by cooling load, air flow divided by volume, area divided by heating load, slope factor, duct insulation, thickness, duct line thickness, airflow cross section, heat gain roughness, airflow density, dynamic viscosity. Well, it's viscous. What else we got? Take a look. Structural force. Linear area, moment, linear moment, stress, unit weight, weight, mass, mass per unit area, thermal expansion coefficient, point spring coefficient, line spring coefficient. This is where I need you. This is where I need my manager. This is where I need my engineer to tell me what he wants me to include or what she wants me to do. This is where they come in. This is where I, I need these folks um, to be my managers, to lead me down this road. I can't do this myself. I can't do this myself. Do I look like I'm a scientist that just came out of Harvard University or Princeton? No, I'm not. I need those folks to tell me to put this in their schedules and to embed this in the data, in their objects, because they didn't learn the software. I did, but I didn't learn this uh, all of these formulas, HVAC has a lot of formulas, a lot, and so does electrical. I tended to gravitate more towards um, some of the electrical uh, aspects of a potential and um, kinetic energy and dynamic statics. So it applies, don't get me wrong, uh, electromechanical engineering is something that uh, you'll learn. But again, I do know a few of these. Uh, I do know a few of these warping constant. Am I well within my faculties? Um, or am I, am I just uh, uh, crazier than a shithouse rat? I'll let you make that decision. But I could use some help, you know. I could use some help. I would like nothing more than to get into uh, the other end of it, as opposed to uh, as it trickles down into the, uh, you know, the realm of... Uh, Fabrication. It was my intent. Uh, I was there in, a, in, a, in, in, in one capacity, um, but I started to get back. Again, I, my engineering office uh, experience was in a long haul fiber optics transmission, and the uh, physics behind that, uh, not necessarily uh, some of the other disciplines. So uh, I do aspire to be back uh, in that capacity, and you know me, I'll get my foot in that door too. It's just how I do it. I, I have an uncanny ability of just getting in. All right, so yeah, look at it. In the uh, structural, uh, there's a whole host of uh, other parameters that we could look at. Let's take a look at electrical, which is a beautiful thing. There are a few, right? Number of poles. Well, just one right now, huh? I am a half Polish. And you see how they group them, right? Uh, if you look in the properties dialog box, you'll see in the edit type, these parameters go in by group, so um, you'll see that that, uh, that, is, that is the case. Then we got piping. Again, some people say that this isn't a very uh, intuitive, but as you can see, there's a whole bunch of parameters that, uh, that exist within that discipline. And then energy. Now, this is something for you folks that may, uh, may uh, do something else. Specific heat of vaporization. Well, not yet. I haven't, I haven't lit up. But I'm getting there. Okay, so I don't want to delve too much onto this. We did this, and you know me, I go off on a tangent. So, now, creating a room schedule. Um, yeah, 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 uh-huh, that's right. Add level, number, name, and area to the list of schedule fields on the right. Filter. Filter. On the filter tab, you can filter out the data you don't want to show in the schedule. Filters work by common database functions. For example, you can filter out all the sheets in a set whose names don't begin with the letter A. Or, you can filter, take away the A, I was just thinking of that book, take away the A from MIT. Or, you can filter a material list so that it shows only items containing concrete. Filters operate only on certain schedule fields. For instance, you can apply, you can apply a filter to the family and type fields. Right, so filter by, these are the, uh, the fields that we brought in. Filter by level equals level one, right? Filter uh, does not equal, right? Is above, is at or above, is below. 
So now, depending on what field you brought in, particular area does not equal, has no value. See, these are the, uh, um, well, there's a word for these. They're, they're modifiers, I believe, in some instance, and uh, common database functions. Right, so, um, yeah. Um, filters operate only on certain scheduled fields. So, for instance, you can't apply a filter to the family and type. So you can't filter out families, you can't filter out types. No, I think that's what that means. Set the first group of filter dropdowns to filter by level. Does not equal, does not equal roof one. It won't, it won't schedule anything on that. It won't schedule anything on roof one. Set the second group of filter dropdowns to filter by level. Second group, filter by level and filter by. Set the second group of filter dropdowns to filter by level does not equal roof two. Okay, sorting and grouping. The sorting grouping tab lets you control the order in which information is displayed and which fields control that order. For instance, if you're creating a sheet index, you can choose to sort by sheet number or sheet name depending on how you'd like the information displayed. You can also decide whether you want to show every instance of an item or only a summary of object types by using the itemized every instance checkbox at the bottom. I have to read that again for my own comprehension. The sorting grouping tab lets you control the order in which information is displayed and which fields control that order. For instance, if you are creating a sheet index, you can choose to sort by sheet number or sheet name, depending on how you like the information displayed. You can also decide whether you want to show every instance of an item or only a summary of object types by using the itemized every instance checkbox at the bottom. And this, I remember, uh, is important because some folks r insist that uh, the estimate uh, be, or the bill be itemized. You can, uh, I want an itemized bill. So sort by level, right, descending, header, footer. So this is how you would uh, sort and group uh, your Microsoft Excel spreadsheet, for lack of a better term, right? So let's just see what it tells us to do. Um, you can also decide whether you want to show every instance of an item or only a summary of object types by using the itemized every instance checkbox at the bottom. If you think about that. If there's 500 doors in a project, um, you're going to see every single instance of that door in the schedule. Whereas if you don't itemize it, uh, it's just going to be doors, quantity, 500, and then whatever uh, quantities that you're deriving from that particular element or group of elements or category. But now, in the first sort by options, Set the drop down to level. Select the header and footer options and set the footer drop down to count and totals. Header and footer options. Title count and totals uh, to count and totals. Uh, then by options, set the drop down to number. Then by options, set the drop down to number. Hold on then by options to the drop-down to number. Uh, but we'll select the header and footer options and set the footer drop-down to count totals. And then by options, set the drop-down to number. Am I doing this right? the first sort by option, set the drop down to level and the, select the header and footer options. And set the footer drop down to count in totals. In the next then by options, set the drop down to number. In the sorting grouping tab, you have the ability to summarize the reported information in group footers or as a grand total at the bottom of the schedule. However, you must designate one or more fields to calculate totals in the formatting tab to display these results. 
as a, as a, a twofer. In the sorting grouping tab, you have the ability to summarize the reported information in group footers or as a grand total at the bottom of the schedule. However, you must designate one or more fields to calculate totals in the formatting tab to display these results. Okay, formatting. The formatting tab controls the displays for each field and whether the field is visible on the schedule. It also controls other elements of the field, such as justification, display name, and orientation of the header. This tab also allows you to use the calculation tools, the calculate tools, checkbox found within the pull-down menu for use with the footer or grand totals option in the sorting grouping tab. So if we went to formatting, you can see that there are um, the uh, the parameters within the uh, dialog box that's going to allow us to do that. Uh, note that you may also need to use the calculate totals option for certain numerical grab, uh, certain numer numerical fields. If you intend to deselect and the itemize every instance option in the sorting grouping tab, for example, if you include the area property of walls and choose not to itemize every instance, the area appears as a blank field in the schedule unless you check the calculate totals option. Okay. The hidden field option is also an important feature to help you customize your schedules. You can use this option when you need to include a field just for filtering or sorting, but you don't want to see it in the schedule, such as a custom sorting parameter for drawing sheets. Uh, you can also select it when you want to use a field as the header of a group of elements in a schedule. For example, you may include the family and type fields, but you want only the family listed as a grouping header because you don't need to show the family name repeated in every row of your schedule, right? Family, door, family, door, family, door. You know, family, door, type, uh, Luan door. Family, door, type, Luan door. You may not need to see that all the time. You may only need to see Luan door or family type once, right? And then it does what it does. So now, but for this exercise, select the level field and then activate the hidden field option. Select the area field. Set alignment to right. And then activate the calculate totals option. Well, let's say what is this? Calculate minimum, maximum, minimum, maximum. Calculate totals option. Appearance. Getting there. The appearance tab controls the graphical aspects of the schedule, such as font size and style of text for each of the columns and headers in the schedule. It also allows you, excuse me, to turn the schedule grid lines on and off and modify line thickness for the grid and boundary lines, which is going to be nice. For revision schedules, you can also specify whether the schedule reads from top to bottom or from bottom to top. For this exercise, select the outline checkbox. I'll put an outline around the whole thing. Remember in Excel, you have a little button that divides the cells, left, right, top, bottom, thick line on the bottom, and then outline the entire uh, grid. So then you have the, uh, each cell has a, a grid line within it. You've played with that, right? Anyway, it, it behaves similar. Uh, check the outline box and set the outline drop down box to wide lines. Just like we did, right? With uh, the, uh, bound, uh, the boundary and all that. Well, not the boundary, we did that with um, um, a few things. Any event, you've seen that. You can change the line type. The embedded schedule tab. Yeah. Um, embedded schedule. The embedded schedule tab is only an available tab when you create a room or a space schedule. Wait till we get to spaces. They insisted that I teach that to the Amish. The Amish insisted that I teach this. The embedded schedule tab is only an available tab when you create a room schedule or a space schedule. The embedded schedule tab allows you to associate another schedule of elements. For example, in your room schedule, if you were to enable embedded schedule and select furniture, it would correlate furniture objects and properties to their respective room, right? How cool is that? In this room, we have this many objects, and this many objects contains this much material. How much upholstery is on the couch in the executive office? How many bare skin rugs are in the lounge on floors six through 10? 
<laughs> How many beaver pelts do we have in the trading post? Out at uh, 10 Sleeps, Wyoming. <laughs> For you chief engineers out there. I don't want a cigarette. Now I want a cigarette. Yeah, it must be a cigarette I need. For you folks heading to Sturgis, you may be in a battle for your lives this year, right? If you think about it, I heard that you know, the whole, these gang members are going to be going out to Sturgis this year. What a show that's going to be. I'm not going to be anywhere near that. They're going to come to go after the bikers next. What a fucking show. Someone's going to make a movie about that. There's a movie, there's a movie script right there. Some, you know, whatever there is, some activists from, I don't know, Florida decide they're going to go out to Sturgis. It could be a comedic event, almost like a Cheech and Chong fucking movie. Anyway, for all you script writers out there, you have carte blanche to steal that too. Uh, okay, so let me not go off on a tangent. This is a long exercise. Um, I have baby powder all over my shirt. Sorry. I just jumped out of the shower. Yeah, so, for example, in your room schedule, if you were to enable schedule and select furniture, it would correlate furniture objects and properties to their respective room. The primary use of the embedded schedule tab is to create a schedule for spaces and associate elements from MEP-based systems, such as duct systems, piping systems, and electrical systems. Though, this example of embedded embedding a furniture schedule would be an appropriate example for this exercise, we will leave it to you to experiment further. And I'm going to, because I already have. But yeah... Yeah, it's, uh, I'll read it again. The primary use of the embedded schedule tab is to create a schedule for spaces and associate elements from MEP-based systems such as duct systems, piping systems, and electrical systems. Right? So uh, I told you, we're getting there. And um, again, just knowing how to use this software platform is a marketable skill. It's a, um, it's a, it's another tool in your toolbox just knowing how the software works and again it helps a lot more if you're cognizant of uh, a lot of uh, um, that information so the more you know about a particular subject the better off you'll be but just think for all, all of you out there that know all about these calculations and all about these design methodologies to, 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 to get these systems um, operational, and, and you know you've been to school, you've been trained, you've been in the field, uh, you, you know at the back of your hands. You may not know this software platform, and, and, and that's where either I come in or you utilize this software platform to do just that, to enhance your skills. Uh, because some folks, well, that's the drafting dawn's uh, responsibility. That's the engineering, you know, there's that delineation line. Well, what do you do for 11? What do you do here? What do you do here? What do you do here? You know, this line, you know, it's, it's very fluid. The more I know about these systems, the better I can help you engineer these these systems. The, the more you know about this software platform, the more you'll be able to engineer these systems. So it's a two-way street, and it's, like I said, it's a bi-directional uh, educational assessment. Um, now, again, lots of laws. Lots of laws. Solomon's, uh, Solomon's laws, I don't know. Anyway, so lots of laws, lots of uh, formulas, lots of uh, engineering practices that we can, um, we can embed. Uh, so, you know, you two uh, that are paying attention, hopefully this wire will reach you. Once you've worked through each of the tabs in the Schedule Properties dialog box, click OK, and you will see the working layout of the schedule. The schedule settings can be modified at any time, but this gives you a basis from which to begin. To modify the schedule, you can access any tab of the Schedule Properties dialog box from the five corresponding buttons in the properties palette when the schedule view is active. A special tab on the ribbon is active when you are editing a schedule. <clears throat> Excuse me. This ribbon is not available when you select a schedule but that has been placed on a sheet but available only in the editing mode. To edit a schedule on a sheet, you must right click 
the schedule and then select edit schedule from the context menu. The modify schedule quantities tab shown has many tools that enable you to modify field selection, hide columns, merge cells, and perform other functions that are similar to those found in Microsoft Excel. And I've seen this before, I've done this before, as a matter of fact. Yeah, it's just like that. You're gonna find this so intuitive to any of you uh, Microsoft Office users. You know, there's so many, and you know what? Think about this, you know, that disconnect between a, a contract drawing set and then that person that's putting all this into a Microsoft Excel schedule, you're, you're, you're cutting out people's jobs. Like, we're not gonna need that guy anymore to do this because this software platform does it, he, it, does, it performs that role for him or her. You know, so I told you, it's culling the herd. You know, how many firms take these, this embedded data from a hard copy drawing and then click, 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 get it onto a, and then give it to somebody else that knows how to use Excel and puts it into a spreadsheet format and then all that horse shit. This just eliminates all of that uh, inconsequential paper flow and that, that workflow practice is just no longer valid. It doesn't, it doesn't hold water in the workplace and it's a waste and it's a hemorrhage of cash. So you make a note of that or don't, it's up to you. Or, or, or continue to just carry paper around the office and, and you'll see, you'll see. For any of you, you young bucks or buckaroos out there, you young does that have an inkling of what I'm talking about, um, break through to the other side. Break on through to the other side. In some schedules, such as room schedules, area schedules, and sheet lists, the insert data row button is active. Now, hold on a second. Let's click OK, shall we? Let's see here. Let's just see if there's any MEP I can grab. I don't think so. I don't think we have any. If I had a model linked, we there would be. Maybe I should. Maybe I don't have a model, MEP model that's synonymous with this building. I have one that's not shaped like this. I can link in and then grab that data, but then it wouldn't really matter because it wouldn't fit in the rooms. All right, so, and sometimes the role of who's putting the rooms in the model is up for debate. You may get a model that doesn't have any rooms in it. You got to put them in. You know, the, ask the architect, are you going to be putting them in the rooms, zones, areas, spaces, or am I going to have to do it? That's a whole other, that's money. I said, okay. What do we get? We got nothing. We got nothing whatsoever. We got garbage. That's our room schedule. A, B, C. So, but here's what I want to show you. If you uh, select the schedule, notice within the, the contextual toolbar, all of this opens up. All of this opens up. Right? Um, and, um, I'll tell you, one of the reasons why this didn't work is because there weren't any rooms in this drawing, remember? There weren't any rooms in here, right? We did the areas, but uh, don't worry, I have a workaround for that. All right, so let me just read through this and I'll open up the finished product because there's a finished product here and I'll show it to you. Um, just give me a second. Don't, uh, fret not, fret not, fret not, fret not, you'll see. All is well, all is well. Let me just close this for a second. All is well. Trip you up a little bit there. Give me a moment. All is well. All is well. Fred and I. There we go. All right, so it didn't get to that part anyway yet, so hold on. Maybe I went ahead too fast. In some schedules, such as room schedules, area schedules, and sheet lists, the insert data row button is active. This command allows you to add rows to the schedule to repopulate the project. All right, well, so what it did do was it, it actually did tell us to hit OK, and it didn't extract any of the data because it wasn't embedded yet. So now that I have the finished project, let's go here and just do it here. Um, there we go. Now, that's what it's supposed to look like. Okay, so you can see um, that's the usable area schedule, right? This is the room schedule. Okay, take a peek at that. This is the sheet list. Okay. This is the wall schedule. Okay, so it's deriving all that data. Now see, as I select it, a contextual toolbar opens up and that's where this next passage comes in. So let's go back to usable area, uh, area usable. And in other words, you can't zoom in and out or anything like that. You're in uh, 
uh, like almost like an Excel, Excel spreadsheet format. You can obviously drag them onto sheets, right? If you see here, if I go to this, if I go to the sheet itself, right? Hold on. If I go to the sheet, the uh, it's on, it's it's dragged onto the sheet. You really can't. Um, it's not really like a view. It's a view. In essence, it's a view that's been dragged onto a sheet. That is, if you if you go to the floor plan, start changing all of this stuff. It's going to update here on the sheet. Think about the bidirectional associativity of all that. That's the most important part of this. It's going to save you a lot of time. It's going to save you a lot of time. And time is money. Anybody who's worked at salt in this industry, for Christ's sakes, has got to recognize this. And if you don't, then your 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 days are numbered at your firm. How's that? Is that is that a safe assumption? The days are numbered at your firm. This is next generation stuff. What do you think? How do you think I found this information out? I, I had to dig deep into the industry to find out what's wrong, what's going on here, why why are people dropping like flies? Why are people dropping like flies? I said to myself. So I, I did some investigative reporting, and I went looking for this, and I didn't learn it in local three. Trust me, this isn't coming from Local 3. This is something I did on my own. I went into the field and I, uh, I ascertained what was going on. This is where I, I found this information. I went digging for it. I didn't get this information from Local 3. That was privileged inf information for another class of folks. I was actually being excluded from that aspect of it. So I decided to uh, figure it out. So I'm back to haunt you, motherfuckers. <laughs> but again, Again, each shop is different. What are you going to do? Each shop is different. Like right now, there's, there's a lot of folks sitting over there that have no idea of making these videos. They're sitting at their desk, <coughs> browsing the internet, a full-time job, making, you know, $2,000 a week, that are, uh, that are sitting in front of an AutoCAD workstation, too deep, with a plotter, and that's their job, to, and that's what they do. And, and they're in their 50s, 51, 52, and the company... It's purely functioning. That doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be functioning forever. You know, people come and go. Whether or not your company's culture is going to evolve to the next series of uh, platforms, it's based on whether or not you're fucking paying attention. And if you spend all your time, you know, counting your money and no time investing in technology and network development, then you're going to find it's going to come back and bite you in the ass. So. Um, let me finish. Uh, let me finish this. In some schedules, such as room schedules and area schedules and sheet lists, the insert data row button is active. If I could get it, excuse me. The insert data uh, in some of them, the insert data row is active. Let's see here. In sub-schedules, such as room schedules, area schedules, and sheet lists, lists, the insert data row button is active. Insert data row. Inserts a row in the schedule so you can add a new value or element. Control plus in Excel, right? Control minus. Same thing. This tool was only available for certain types of schedules, such as key schedules. Control minus. Now, um, this command allows you to add rows to the specific to the schedule to, re to pre to pre populate the project with values before you actually create an element. In the example of rooms, if you first create a room schedule and then generate a list of rooms using the insert data row commands, you can place rooms in your model using the predefined data in the room dropdown from the options bar. In addition to the various formatting tools in the contextual tab for schedules, you will find a panel named parameters within the project. I'm sorry, you will find a panel named parameters. The drop downs in this panel allow you to select some cells in the schedule and point them to the parameters within the project. As an example, we inserted a row beneath the title row and set the left cell to project information project number. The two remaining cells in that row were merged and the cell's parameter was set to schedule. Phase uh, schedule phase using the drop downs, the two drop downs of the parameters panel. As you can see from figure 18.22, you can even change the phase of the schedule directly in the cell uh, of the schedule. So I, I can do that. Do I want to do that right now? No. 
I'm not going to perform that exercise because it just says that you can. It doesn't tell you how. And uh, I'm not going to provide you that solution just yet, but you can. Right? You can. Not place, not place. And if uh, you... Uh, you can insert data rows and uh, you can populate uh, it with predefined data. Um, anyway, so, um, yeah, all that. Again, we can't get into all of this right this second, right? Or we'll be here all day. Now, another key feature. And you're free to experiment on your own, depending on your discipline and where you fit in your company's culture and your role to go and, and perform a lot of this and find out how this fits into your workflow. And if you feel it doesn't, then, then don't. You do it, it's your prerogative. You can change this channel. There is absolutely nothing here forcing you to conform to this. I'm not forcing you to do anything. I'm just making a suggestion. Now, okay, another key feature of the contextual tab for schedules is the highlight and model button. Now that's fantastic. I already can tell you obviously what that's gonna do, right? Let's get a, uh, let's get a uh, floor plan open. Let's WTZA for a second. All right, so we have the level one floor plan open and we have the, uh, we have the um, area schedule open. A highlight in model button, right? So if I'm in this, if I'm in this dialog box, uh, in this view, I'll get the contextual toolbar for the modified schedule quantities. If I'm in this one, I won't, right? So just make a note of that, left, right? Look at the difference in the toolbar. Uh, modify, um, highlight in model button. This button allows you to select any element in the schedule and locate the element within the model. Let's say you want to locate a particular door from your store schedule. Select the respective row in the schedule and click the highlight in model button. Well, we didn't schedule doors, right? But we could have. And what it's saying is, if we were selecting it, it would highlight, right? Now, if you just notice how I could change the model from the schedule, right? Isn't that fantastic, right? And vice versa. You see the bi-directional associativity of that? Can I show you that again? Right? Now, again, you AutoCAD users, have fun. Hope you're enjoying your day. This technique can be very, uh, very useful way to locate elements in the model, especially for larger models. Now that you have an idea of the elements that compose the schedule, let's explore the workflow with the following two exercises. You will first create a simple wall schedule and then create a usable area schedule based on the areas you defined earlier in this chapter. Okay, now, we're going to stop this there because, um, again, I have to prepare a little bit. Um, it's uh, 11.30 already. I've got a bit of things to do today, but yeah, this thing's going to get a lot more granular. And uh, you carpenters out there are going to love the next section. So there's any carpenters in the mix. This looks like it's right up your alley. This is gearing towards um, uh, the carpentry discipline in this next exercise. This might be something you might want to stay tuned for. I'm just kind of go ahead a little bit here and see what we got coming down the pike. Well, it doesn't much go much further after that. Um, we're going to be getting into annotating our design. So, as you can see, as they touch on these uh, subjects, there you have so much homework. Okay, I'm assigning you homework. I get to do that for the first time in my life because, again, my kids. They don't listen to a fucking thing I say. Um, but they get their homework in a different way. But this is homework that you have to perform. I, I, again, you're three, right? You barely speak English, right? You crawl around on the floor. Some of them can't even walk yet. This is geared for them that have the rattle in their fucking hands. That have my, my, pop, pop, blowing fucking bubbles. This is designed for fucking three-year-olds. Again, uh, my intent is to uh, call the herd. Uh, my intent is to call the herd, you know. For those 50 year olds that are sitting on the bar stool right now and I have no fucking clue what's going on. But professing to know everything. For all those engineers, those chief engineers that are out there that are uh, walking around uh, professing to know everything that are not cognizant of what they should be doing, uh, finding out the new methodologies and, and um, 
utilizing ways uh, and new techniques. That's what they should be doing. If you're a chief engineer, you should be finding new techniques for your staff. Not running, around, not running around like a fucking ridiculous Santa Claus kissing the fucking CEO's ass at fucking uh, corporate fucking meetings and events. What a fucking idiot that fucking retard was, huh? Anybody know him? Anyone? Anyone work at fucking Comstock? Like that fucking kiss ass? Anybody know? Anybody? Anybody out there? The one that runs around like fucking Santa Claus? The chief engineer over there at Comstock? Fucking buffoon. Fucking buffoon. That's what he should be doing. But he's not. He's just a brown-nosing ass kisser. This day will come. <laughs>